Hello again, everyone. I'm Hamilton. I'm Ingrid, and we are Twin, Twin Soul, Soul Poets. Poets. We're back with another episode of The Love Seat. The Love Seat. The Love Seat. And this week, we are talking about the don'ts and the do's of... Relapse. Womp, womp, womp. Yeah. We were going to talk about the ecstatic exchanges from the book we mentioned, but I relapsed last week, so we're talking about this. It is what it is. Um... Great opportunity though, right? Yes. It's a tough thing to deal with, but we've got some good don'ts and do's. Number one, for don'ts, don't be defensive. Um, it's really, really important for me to allow her to feel whatever she feels about me relapsing. Whether that's upset, sad, angry, frustrated, disappointed. I need to be able to just listen and be understanding. So, yeah, right. that makes sense. Rather than... Rather than, uh, that, well, that makes me feel worse, or it's not a value, it's just, you know, I can't control it, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's not helpful, usually. <laughs> and then for me, I think it's knowing the side effects of relapse and um, educating yourself. I know that um, he's often going to be more irritable, he might feel distant, like be, what, anxious? Yeah, um, a big side effect I've noticed is resentment and just negativity in general in my brain. Right, and if I'm more aware of those emotions, I'm less likely to take them personally. Um, just asking, how can I support you, is a really great place to start. What can you do to help? How can I be there? Um, letting them know I'm there for you. Yeah, and it, and for me, if I can, instead of being an asshole and like sort of attacking her personally, and just be like, I'm feeling really irritable today. Communication is key. You know, yeah. Then we, one of us can go take space or something. Number two of our don'ts. Don't make your needs your partner's responsibility. This is a big one. Big one. So while it's fine to ask for things that you need or want, like attention, conversation, physical affection. It's also fine for your partner to say, I don't think I can offer that right now. Right. So what that boils down to is prioritizing self-care. During a relapse cycle, it's super important to make sure you're taking care of yourself. Because when you're both taking care of yourself, you're more likely to be able to come back together in yeah. a more positive way. And for the addict, that's, that means you know avoiding the big danger zones of like angry, tired, hungry. You know, and you know if I'm feeling hungry, it needs to not be about oh you didn't make me anything to eat. It I just I need to go get myself some food. Um, take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Exercise is good. Yeah, and for me, like, if I'm feeling upset about what has happened or anything, like, I can't rely on him to make me feel better because obviously he's not going to be in the mood to do that, most likely. But also, you know, I need to reach out, go hang out with my girlfriends, um, go get a foot massage or read a book, get some alone time. So that way we can come back as better people for each yeah. other. Number three, don't give up. Um, it's really easy to beat yourself up after a relapse, really easy to slide into that despair, hopelessness, all the shame that wants to pile on, but, um, you know, keep going, keep trying, Just get back up, dust yourself off, and keep moving forward, um, because these habits form themselves over years, and it might take some time to recover and heal. Yeah. But, and it's important not to like allow the relapse or the addiction even to define your relationship. It can be easy to do when you're in the midst of it to feel like, oh, we're failing and doing so horribly. But when you like kind of take a moment to step back and be like, we're going to keep moving forward anyway, like you realize that it's just a little bump in the road. It doesn't mean that you're not making a lot of great progress. And a relapse can be a great opportunity for learning. Like, okay, what triggered me? What, um, what can I add? And my, to my toolkit for success to help support myself. What are some new strategies I could try? Yeah. Always learn and take notes. Don't know? give up on each other either. You know, just um, just do everything you can to encourage each other and to have um, faith that you will be able to get through it. Yeah. Um, now for the do's, which um, things to do are things you do want to do. <laughs> do to do sense. these do do these <laughs> to be successful. Number one is communicate honestly. We already kind of went over this in the first video, but for us it is like the crucial cornerstone Communication is of coming everything, through this. Um, for you, I know you like to I, feel like sharing, right? I have to. I don't <laughs> like to do it every time I realize, but it is of the utmost importance that I tell her, tell anyone that I trust involved in my um, recovery as soon as possible. 
the longer I wait, the more I'm likely to like turn that relapse into a binge, to continue to relapse, to continue to build more shame and anxiety. And the sooner I tell someone, the sooner I can get back on track. Yeah. And like for me, communication means like being able to tell him open and openly and honestly about how I feel. And that might be upset, you know, hurt, um, sad, whatever it is. But, um, I mean, how do you feel when I, when I share those Usually, things openly? Usually, you know, even if she's really upset about it, usually that's motivating for me because it's so easy to believe that this is like a harmless addiction and that doesn't affect mm -hmm. anyone. It's just something I'm doing by myself, but it, that's not true. And to know that, to feel her being upset and having her feelings hurt by it, it, it definitely does motivate me to be like, oh, I can't do that again, you know? Right. And part of, a crucial part of communication is active listening. So just taking the time to be present, listen to your partner can really go a long way. Um, our second do is to make uh, time and space for intentional affection. So Hamilton is going to talk briefly on yeah, the, oxytocin, right? There, yeah, this book that we were talking about explains uh, this chemical oxytocin that is released in the brain when you're doing simple affectionate things like shoulder rub or, you know, foot rub, hugging, cuddling. Those things release oxytocin in the brain, which has a very different effect uh, chemically than, than dopamine, which, you know, is released from porn and sexual excitement. Uh, dopamine has a chemical crash afterwards and you end up feeling anxious, nervous, depressed after the fact. Oxytocin is relaxing. It makes you feel happy. It makes you feel uh, safe and good right. and, and warm. Like, and literally boosts your immune system, right? There's yeah, a study it, that cuddling it, it makes you healthier. Makes you healthier. Uh, it will keep the cold away. But um, yeah, make space to give each other some dosens of yeah, toast. You keep doing that while I show even, you here. Even if you don't feel like it, even if you're feeling very isolated and shut off, Give yourself 10 minutes out of the day to like just intentionally do that. I promise you, it will make you feel better. And it's the best kind of medicine for when you're feeling tense. Yeah, and I just want to add that like a lot of times during a relapse cycle that um, wordless communication is far more effective than trying to talk it out. Yeah. Um, there's times that I've just gone up to him and given him a hug and all of a sudden that anger melts away and maybe like yeah. the sadness comes out or he cries or, you know, but it's like it's really healing. And yeah. very do. Our last do is to consider starting a gratitude ritual. Um, this one's been huge for us, right? Yes. It's a very easy, simple practice that we like to do at the end of the day where we just literally just take turns saying things that you're grateful for. And it's a very easy way to flip that perspective from feeling frustrated and defeated to like, oh, these are things that are going good and these are things that I feel happy about having, you know. I'm grateful to have a Take bed, I'm grateful to have a wife have. who supports me, I'm grateful to have a 12-step program that I can go to, to have, uh, be able to watch people on YouTube give advice and know other people are going through this. Yeah, and what I've noticed is when you do that, you get the three P's, which are positivity, patience, and perspective. Um, your, your mindset instantly gets more positive when you're focusing on what you can appreciate. Um, it does breed patient and foster patience because you realize that while this is a big challenge in your life, there's a lot of other things that are working, so this is something else worth waiting for. <laughs> the perspective. Perspective just means like, you know, having the ability to look back on all you have achieved, even if it doesn't have anything to do with the addiction. You can go ahead and what you're going to say. On yeah, patience. this positivity is going to help you recover because when you're in that negative headspace, um, your your addiction is more likely to to get you to act out, to medicate yourself, to to make yourself feel better with porn. Keep your it doesn't take any more energy to feel grateful and positive than it does to feel negative and and depressed. Um, it just doesn't. It just takes a flip of a switch. On that note, we'll dose a toast for you, boo. Yeah. Thanks. We'll so uh, yeah, tune in next time. Thanks for uh, watching. Give us a like, subscribe to the channel, watch our our first episode if you haven't seen that yet, and um, yeah, remember to ask questions. Yeah, give us, to talk about, please, please give us comments on other topics that you would like us to cover, and um, yeah.
we'll have more for you in store. Mm -hmm. <laughs>